Oh, good afternoon, everybody. It's lovely to see you out this afternoon, just one or two of us. Uh, I understand that the traffic is just as bad down near Asda as it was a wee bit earlier when I got caught in it, so maybe there'll be one or two folks who will turn up a little bit later. We'll see how that goes. But there's plenty of room at the back for them to, to creep in if they want to, and that's just fine. Just a couple of um, reminders of what else we have going on over this next two days. We've got a watch night service tonight at 11.15. I assume you're probably here because it's a bit late to be coming out to that, and that's just fine. Um, we've also got a Christmas Day service tomorrow at 10.45, and there we've been encouraging particularly the children, but the adults as well if they want to, but particularly the children, to bring along some of their presents if they want to, uh, to show and to share about what they've already started to enjoy about Christmas by, uh, by that point. And again, it's a short service, but uh, an opportunity to sing some hymns, and we also have uh, a short communion at the end of that service as well. But first things first... There's something about the chancel here that isn't quite ready. What's not been done? Can anybody spot it? Oh, Lou is pointing. Lou thinks he knows what it is. Can any of you boys know what it is? What's not done? Click. Click. Gregory? What do you think it is? You're not sure. Stuart. The candles haven't been lit. That's right. Well, we're going to have to light the candles then, aren't we? I wonder if I could get some volunteers. We've got four candles we need to light today. We're back to the two runners joke again still. I've got to eat that out as long as I can. Four candles. Uh, I'm seeing one, two, three, four hands. Well, it's, it's all the boys today. Fantastic. We're only lighting four of them because they've all got a special name and the white one in the middle has got a special name as well, but we don't light that till tomorrow. So what if you four boys might like to join me up here? Come on up to the, fr to the front here and we'll let you have a shot at lighting the candles. Who'd like to light the first one? You for it, Stuart? Do you remember what they're all called? Stuart, what's the first one called? Do you remember? Oh, Joy is one of them, that's right. That's the, that's the pink one at the back here. What else have we got? Gregory? <laughs> have you just read that? <laughs> Very well done. You'll get bonus for ingenuity there. So who likes to light the first one? Who likes to light the first one? Is that okay? Now, if I light this, this long candle for you, and if you come around here, maybe jump... Oh, actually, that would be best. Yeah, maybe if you jump up on here. Would you like to jump up on that seat? This is probably the safest way to do it. If I give you this long candle, do you think you might be able to light one for me? Maybe like this one here. If you want to stand up, I'll hold on to you so you don't fall over. There we go, I've got you. Can you light that one? Right down onto the black bit. There, look. Can you manage it? Oh, you're doing a good job there. A little bit closer. A little bit closer. Oh, it's a long, wacky one. Nearly... Just move over here a little bit for you. I think you've got it actually, but higher. Put your end up higher. Higher, 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 higher. It's because we've been lighting them throughout the month that we have. We've got it. We've got it. Well done, young man. Thank you. Well done. Are you going to go next, Kyle? Yes, I'm going to Okay, I'm going to pick you up actually because you're on the wee side. Oh. Can you pick, do this one over here for me? Well done. And we can put your candle straight up again for me so it doesn't drip. And hand that to Gregory. Gregory, would you like to light one as well, please, for me? You're, you're big enough to stand up, aren't you? Yeah, you light that one. And then last but not least, that's us. Good. And again, put it straight up. Put, it's, it's lit. That's fine. Now put it straight up like that. That's it. So it won't drip. Lovely. And now Stuart can light the last one here for us as well, the pink one. So we've got four candles. As I say, I, I'm really trying to restrain myself from going for the two Ronnie's gag this year. Thank you. And that's them all lit. There's one more in the middle, which we've not mentioned yet. And what's the big white one in the middle? Can anybody tell us what that one represents? You can have a go, Stuart? Oh, well, 
it's, it might be linked to it. It's, it's not actually happiness, but it's something that makes us happy, hopefully. That's why we're here today. We might need to ask an adult, what do you think the little big white one is? What does that represent? Jim, go on then. Christ candle. It's the Christ candle, that's it. So we don't get to light that, because it's not Christmas Day yet. Because tomorrow morning, we remember that Christ has his birthday on Christmas Day. Did you know that, did you? Yeah? Well done, Sophie. Sophie knew it. So we managed to light some candles. Actually, I'm going to bring that um, tape back over in just a second. Because we've got lots of readings today, and I want to give the, the children an extra opportunity to light some candles, maybe whilst we're doing some of the readings, and while we're thinking about a few things. So we'll see how that goes, because we've got quite a number of candles there to light even yet in our Advent crown. But we're called to worship this afternoon with just a few words from Psalm 96. In 90, Psalm 96, the first few verses say this, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, how his marvelous works among all the peoples. And that's a cue for us to sing our first hymn, hymn 273. And it should be coming up on the screen as well, hopefully. O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Messiah declared, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Please be seated as we prepare our hearts for prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we have need of you every day, and this day we approach you through your Son. With Christmas just one sleep away, we anticipate hearing Jesus voiced through the stories of him as a child, even a child in a manger. You often speak quietly. So we listen for your voice. We listen to your voice as the wind whistles in the trees throughout winter. We listen to your words in the stories of scripture. We listen to your lessons in the things that happen in life. We listen to your advice when your people tell us things, or we hear from our parents, or elders and betters, or your ministers. And since the most innocent and simple things come from the mouths of babes, when we listen to children, you speak to us through children. You spoke to us through the voice of a child who would become the Jesus that we love. We want to listen to you and understand what you want to tell us, but so often we let your words get drowned out in the background noise of life. That's never the basis of a good relationship, and we apologize for our inattentiveness to you and to one another. Forgive us of all that gets between us and draw us close to you that we might learn of your ways. We want to sing of your glory and bless your name. We want to make it known on the mountaintops for your light has arisen as Christ is born in Bethlehem and your glory is risen upon us as the children whom you have loved. Draw us close teach us and as we draw close to you teach us through the words Christ taught us saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to sing another hymn now. It's a very well-known one, this. In fact, I don't even know if you're going to need the words on the screen, but we'll see how we get on. It's hymn 312, Away in a Manger.
seated. Now I'm going to encourage you to listen very carefully to some of the readings that we've got coming up, because I might be asking questions a little bit later, especially our younger ones. I want you to listen very carefully. And in particular, I'd like to know what jumps out at you or interests you. And I will ask you about that a little bit later, not just the younger ones, incidentally, some of the older ones as well. I'd be interested to know what jumps out at you. And while these readings are taking place, maybe some other young ones might like to actually help me light some of these extra candles as well. Would you like to do that? Would you like to give me a hand? Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 52, verses 7 to 10. That's page 717 in the Good News Bible. How wonderful it is to see a messenger coming across the mountains, bringing good news, the news of peace. He announces victory and says to Zion, your God is king. Those who guard the city are shouting, shouting together for joy. They can see with their own eyes the return of the Lord to Zion. Break into shouts of joy, you ruins of Jerusalem. The Lord will rescue his city and comfort his people. The Lord will use his holy power. He will save his people and all the world will see it. Amen. Our second reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verses 1 to 12, and this can be found on page 275 of the Good News Bible. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors many times and in many ways through the prophets, but in these last days, he has spoken to us through his Son. He is the one through whom God created the universe, the one whom God has chosen to possess all the things at the end. He reflects the brightness of God's glory and is the exact likeness of God's own being, sustaining the universe with his powerful words. After achieving forgiveness for the sins of all human beings, he sat down in heaven at the right side of God, the supreme power. The Son was made greater than the angels, just as the name that God gave him is greater than theirs. For God never said any of this to his angels. You are my son. Today I have become your father. Nor did God say any about any angel. I will be his father and he will be my son. But when God was about to send his firstborn son into the world, he said, All of God's angels must worship him. But about the angels, God said, God makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. About the Son, however, God said, Your kingdom, O God, will last for ever and ever. You rule over your your people with justice. You love what is right and hate what is wrong. That is why God, your God, has chosen you and has given you the joy of an honour far greater than he gave to your companions. He also said, You, Lord, in the beginning created the earth. And with your own hands you made the heavens. They will disappear, but you will remain. They will all wear out like clothes. You will fold them up like a coat, and they will be changed like clothes. But you are always the same, and your life never ends. Amen. Amen. We need two more volunteers. And that's an opportunity. Oh, well, you've had a go already, boys. I want to give the adults a chance. We need two more. Or at the back like to re- have a go. Thank you. Would you like to have a shot? Oh. You have a go as well, Gillian. Well done. Excellent. These ones haven't been lit before, so they're taking a little bit longer just to light, which took a bit longer than we expected. Any other takers, or should I light the rest of them? No? You know, I would have thought all the, the wee boys would have wanted to have a shot at this, but, uh, oh, here we go. There you go. <laughs> <Relaxes> as well. <laughs> here we go. And uh, while we are just writing the rest of them, I think we've got another 
hymn to sing. We're going to sing um, hymn 315, Once in Royal David's City. Please be seated once more. Our next reading is our gospel reading for today, and that's taken from John chapter 1, from the beginning. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. Through him God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without him. The Word was the source of life, and this life brought light to the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light. He came to tell about the light. This was the real light the light that comes into the world and shines on all people. The Word was in the world, and though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him, so he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father, God himself was their father. The Word became a human being and, full of grace and truth, lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. Amen. May God bless to us these readings of his holy Word. Now we're going to sing the the carol that we find on the back of the sheet that hopefully you got on the way in. Ding dong merrily on high.
Oh, please be seated. Take a deep breath. <laughs> oh, I'm at a puff after that one. <laughs> well, this afternoon, rather than hearing all from me, maybe I'll hear from you for a change and give me a chance to catch my breath back as well. This afternoon, I'd like us to think about what we hear. What we hear. And so we've had a couple of readings there. We had an Old Testament reading, we had a New Testament reading, and then we had a, a longer gospel reading as well. Was there anything in those readings that jumped out at you, or that maybe you found interesting, or just piqued your interest from what we heard read? There's a question and a half. I did say I was going to be asking questions later, didn't I? <laughs> No takers. Okay, let me just uh, remind us of just a few of those verses. First of all, in our Old Testament, in uh, Isaiah 52, how about this little phrase? It's one that we've used to open a service that we had in the church just a few weeks ago. Uh, in verse 8, it says, The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye, they see the return of the Lord in Zion. So they're lifting up their voices, they're singing, and of course we've had an opportunity to do that this afternoon as well. Well, how about this New Testament verse in Hebrews chapter 1, just those first couple of verses. Long ago, at, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. That's what we thought. And then last but not least, how about our opening words from John 1, chapter, John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And of course, that's not just that chapter, but that whole gospel goes on to proclaim that this one that was called the Word was actually Jesus Christ, the one who came into the world as a child, who lived within the world, and who had words of advice for us, had the sage words of advice for us, and then ultimately died and was resurrected as well, and in whom we put our faith in. It can be very hard sometimes to listen when there's lots of things going on. I don't know if you found it easier or more difficult than usual listening to the first two readings while the candles were being lit. So perhaps make it that little bit more difficult when we're thinking about or seeing other things taking place as well. Do we listen to things? How well do we listen? That's a question for all of us, myself included. Do we listen to the sound of small children? Or do we tune them out? I think as parents very often, it's very easy to tune out the sound of our children. Very, very easy. Other times, when there are other children around and just at, well, we all are shouting and, and bawling or shouting at one another or whatever, hearing our own child in the midst of that, sometimes we pick out that voice just like that because it's a voice that we recognize. And maybe we're attuned to that voice as well as being able to tune it out as well. Do we, or did we, listen to our parents? There's a question. There's a few frowns at that one. Mm. Did I? Do we listen to God calling to us through the stories in Scripture, but also through our experiences in life? Have you ever thought about that? That sometimes God speaks to us through our experiences in life. And maybe watch us to see how we'll respond what happens in life that tells its own tale. God speaks. Now, I think I've probably got a picture up next, Alan, am I right? Who recognises that picture? Do you recognise the picture of the man on the, uh, on the screen? Gregory, who do you think it might be? Oh, well, nice try. It's not Jesus. No, not this one. It's somebody else who lived a while after him. Who could it possibly be? 
كايو Man, yes, it's definitely a man. Yeah. Did you know that that is an early, early picture of someone called Saint Nicholas, or as we call him nowadays, Santa Claus? Did you know that? That's a picture of Santa Claus, an old, old picture, hundreds of years old, of Saint Nicholas. And St. Nicholas had a very important job to do. As well as being a very generous man, and a man who loved children, and we know that ourselves, don't we? As well as all of that, he also was a bishop. And a bishop is basically a minister who looks after other ministers. Did you know he had that job as well? Isn't that amazing? So I'm going to give us an opportunity to, to listen to another wee story that maybe we've heard many times before in the past. It's called The Night Before Christmas. And I wonder if some of the younger ones might like to join me at the front as I tell you this story. Would you like that? Let's come to the front and I'll tell you a story. very carefully I'll tell you this only once is that how it goes <laughs> twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring not even a mouse the stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St Nicholas soon would be there the children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama, her kerchief, and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. And you know what? I've just realised I've forgotten something. Oh, let's settle down for a long winter's nap, shall we? I'd best put my cap on. There we go. Oh, that's a nice warm one. How's that? Does that do the trick? Do you think that will keep nice and warm? And Mama in her kerchief and mine in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew with a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast <coughs> of new-fallen snow Gave the luster of midday to the objects below. When what to my wandering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his courses they came. And he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now, Dasher! Now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Dunner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky, so up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys, and St Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my hand and was turning around, down the chimney St Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. Achoo! A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses. His nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up in a bow. And the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe. This is obviously politically correct these days, but nonetheless. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth. And the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. 
He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim if he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Was that a good story? Did you like that one? Yeah? That's the night before Christmas. Well, if you want to go back again now, that's the end of the story. Did you like that? Is that good, Cam? Good stuff. I think I'll keep the hat on. It's nice and warm. I managed to turn it around a little bit, but it's falling down over my eyes. Now, last year, I asked the question in our Christmas message, how important is light to us? Because a lot of the scriptures we read around this time, around Christmas time, and in fact, one we read there in John as well, talked about light and being able to see. But this year, I really do want to focus on how important is sound to us. Did you notice some of the sounds we had in that story? Did you hear some of them as we were going through that story? There was a clatter on the lawn, and out he went to investigate what was happening. And then there was a whistling and there was a shouting of names, the names of all the different reindeer. There was a prancing and pawing of hooves on the roof. There was laughter. There was more whistles. And then there was an exclamation at the end of, Happy Christmas! Wasn't that lovely? Lots of things to be able to hear in that story as well. And so I want to just think about how well we listen. How well Do we listen even this Christmas? Do we listen to things? Do we listen to the sound of small children, either playing or even trying to approach us by telling us something? Do we or did we listen to our parents? And are their words still ringing in our ears, maybe many years later? And do we listen to God calling to us through the stories of Scripture and through our experiences in life? So often this season is very much about what we want. We want this, we want that, we want the other. But how about we maybe spend some time this Christmas listening? Listening to what others want, and maybe even what they need, but also what God wants from each of his children. But I'll leave you with some final words, the final words of that story that we just read together. Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Amen. Now, I hope to see you in the morning, but just in case, when it does come, may you have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We're going to sing our final hymn now. It's hymn 306, O Come All Ye Faithful. It's not Christmas Day yet, so we can't sing the last verse yet, unfortunately. Not till tomorrow, so you'll have to come back tomorrow if you want to sing that one with us. We'll sing the first three verses of O Come All Ye Faithful.
Now go listening to the words of Christ. May hope, peace, joy, and love guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and abide upon you all and those whom you love this Christmas time, now and evermore. Thank you.